And we know that Jesus is called King only as he is executed. Still find it a mystery, hard, hard to fathom. But with Mary today, we will hear the news of what God is up to and say, count us in.
Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you here. I can't tell you how much I look forward all week to be right here with you in this spot. And I just really want to thank John and Dan because, as a lot of you members know, our first core value is that we grow closer to God through worship, music, and prayer. And these two, I don't know about you, but they have brought God right into my heart with their music this morning. So I just really want to thank them again for their gift to our church and to all of us. Thank you. Whoops. Okie dokie. Uh, please join me in our Advent reading. Advent is a time to let go of anger and fear. God of love, fill our hearts with true compassion. Advent is a time to look for the best in others. God of love, help us speak truth with kindness. Advent is a time to share with those in need. God of love, remind us that in giving, we receive. Advent is a time to notice and appreciate the good around us. God of love, help us see the world through loving eyes. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Please, please pray with me. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come with your abundant grace and might. Free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, the second part of our first core value is we grow closer to God through worship in the scripture. So please join me in our uh, gospel reading for today. It's from the first chapter of Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, folks, we're at the fourth, uh, fourth Sunday in Advent now. So today we're going to be lighting four candles. The candles of hope, peace, joy, and the candle representing love. This candle is a symbol of Christ's eternal love for us, as well as a reminder that we have been instructed to love others as we love ourselves. Because God is love, and because we were created in God's image, we ourselves are the embodiment of God's love here on this earth. Love is patient and kind and powerful, and we all share the calling to go into the world and spread that love to others.
Greetings, everyone. Uh, greetings, all our online friends. Uh, thanks to Dave Ergens. You guys are joining us here today. So we're glad for, uh, that you can be part of our service today. So uh, we rounded the, uh, the fourth uh, candle here, and uh, we're on to Christmas week, which is, uh, means a lot of different things to a lot of different folks. And so uh, today we... Uh, Remember the candle of hope, the Old Testament candle, the candle of peace, the Bethlehem candle, the candle of joy, the pink one, the Mary candle, and then finally the angel's candle today, the uh, candle of love. This whole uh, dialogue that Julie read to us was a, uh, a dialogue of Mary having this conversation with an angel, which is kind of weird because some people are like refusing to believe in angels. And so uh, if if you refuse to, be an to believe in angels, that's fine. But uh, if it wasn't for an angel, Mary would be scratching her head wondering what to do. And the gave, angel Gabriel gave her instructions as to how to deal with this uh, perplexing situation that came across her, uh, being pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and what to do with that. So the cost of love. Sometimes... Uh, we get into these uh, situations, maybe at work or at school, maybe a, a couple's party or something like that where people exchange gifts. And it's uh, kind of a perplexing thing because you're thinking in your mind, unless they tell you the limit of the gift, then you're stuck. And then you're kind of looking, well, what are we spending? Because if you spend too little, you offend the person. If you spend too much, you offend the person. So now you're stuck. What are we spending here? Who told us what the cost of the gifts are? Right? And so that's that's a tough place to be in, how to judge the cost of the gifts if there's no limit. And that can be with family members too. Sometimes family members, just instead of going out and buying everyone a gift, they say, well, we're gonna exchange gifts, everybody draw from a hat and do it kind of that way, all different kinds of ways to do things, right? But there's always a cost of the gift. And we generally don't put it on the person. We don't say, well, you know, Uncle Louie's only worth this much, but Aunt Sally, man, she's worth a, she's worth a ton. And so we kind of don't do that, right? And if God did that for us, where would we be? If God looked down on each of us and looked at our, our faithfulness, our behavior, our attitudes towards others and Him, and we all walked around with little uh, price tags on our forehead, you know, 49 cents, $1.99, 250 right? But God didn't do that for us. He gave us everything. Full price gifts with no return back. And the Bible says even when we were enemies of God, even when we were paying attention to him at all, God gave his son for us. What is our worth? Well, apparently God feels we're worth everything because that's what he gave us this Christmas season. And that's what we celebrate. The fact that God lavished on us his most supreme gift. So we know what we love. We love God. And we kind of love gifts too, right? We kind of love gifts. What don't we love? 
We don't love waiting, I can tell you that for sure. I haven't met a person who just loves being in a doctor's waiting room or in a dentist's office or 365 persons behind trying to get gas in a gas line or whatever it is, right? We don't love waiting. We don't love waiting to get on an airplane. We don't love waiting for in a grocery store. We don't love waiting, right? One of my favorite corny jokes comes from this, uh, the Russian comedian. Yakov Shmirnov. I don't really know if he was a Russian or if that was part of his act. Maybe he was just a guy from New Jersey who claimed to be a Russian. I mean, who he really knows, right? Who asked the question? But anyway, so he had a long playing run in the comedy stores and everything. So he comes up with this classic, classic joke. He says, I'm a Russian immigrant. And he goes, when I got here, he says, I went into a uh, American grocery store and on my first shopping trips, I saw powdered milk. You just add water and you get milk. He goes, that's crazy. And then I'm walking down the aisle and I saw this powdered orange juice. You just add water and there it is. You get orange juice. And then I saw this aisle and it said baby powder. And I thought to myself, what a country. <laughs> Instant stuff. We don't like waiting. Add water. We're good with that. It doesn't matter what it is. Especially for children. This is, this is the most tough. This is the toughest week for children, from, from this Sunday to whatever Christmas is, waiting, staring under the tree, knowing there's presents there, knowing there's presents coming by Amazon or wherever they're coming, waiting, waiting. It's not only for children, though. It's for spouses expecting their soldiers to come home for Christmas. That is a big wait. It's for family members who haven't seen each other all year because of COVID. Finally, because of some reason, they may get to see each other, and they may only get to see each other on Zoom. Who knows? But that is a big wait. Waiting's a hard thing to do. It's a strange dynamic for us. And the funny thing with waiting is the longer you stare at the clock, the worse it is, right? Waiting just gets longer with the waiting itself. It's like your eyes are glued to the clock, and time will not pass. It's not one of our virtues. On the contrary, we try to figure out ways to do things faster so we don't have to wait. But here we are, with this situation of waiting. Jesuit priest William Lynch says there are two kinds of waiting. One is there's waiting because we have nothing else to do. And so it's that kind of waiting. And that seems to be the waiting that the world is in to right now. We're waiting for somebody else to make a move for somebody to save us, for somebody to do something. We're waiting for something to happen. In fact, there was a song in 2008 that came out called Waiting for the World to Change. It's not that we don't care, it's not that we know that fighting ain't fair, so we just keep on waiting, waiting for the world to change. It's like throwing your arms up and saying, everything's so, so dismal, so corrupt, we just have to wait. We just keep waiting for the world to change. But my question today is, what makes you think the world will ever change? Where is that written? And could you give me 10 copies of that book? And there's a second kind of waiting. And that's the waiting that we heard today in our reading. That's the waiting that God gives us that something's already happened. It's already here. And so our waiting is very short on that. Because the angel was here and says, I'm here to announce to you a great and joyful event, which is made for everyone worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town. A savior who is Messiah and the masters. And that's the angel speaking to the shepherds. It's happened. The savior has come and he's here. And God's peace has been declared to the world. And it's available to us. We don't have to wait for that. We don't have to wait on God for the Savior because the greatest event that ever will happen is here. There's nothing greater than that. There's nothing to wait for. It's saying, well, it gets better, right? No, it doesn't get better. The Savior's here. All this other stuff going on, it'll take care of itself. It'll play out. But the waiting is over because the Savior is here. Bill Hoffman's a uh, Civil War expert. And so back in the days of the Civil War, we lost a great many Americans. I'm thinking 500,000 in my close, Dale? Closer to 
Okay, closer to seven, right? A year before that, no, actually 16 years before that, but a year before the French declared the abolition of slavery, which is 16 years before our Civil War, there was a song that came out. You know this song. It's O Holy Night, written by a Frenchman. It was a poet written by a Frenchman. And after hearing this song, the French declared slavery's over within a year, 16 years before us. There was no... There was not a person who died in this battle. It was just done. Based on a song, they ended slavery in France because of a song. An interesting thing enough for us, the poem was written as French. When it was translated into English, they left out the most important part of the song, the part that was in French, the part that caused the French to end slavery. And we know the song, Oh Holy Night. Two versions, the English version and, and the French version. The French version goes, he knows our need to our weakness, no stranger. Behold your king before him lowly bend. Behold your king, your king before him bend. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Now listen to this. This never made it to the English version, which could have saved the 700,000 people because of a song. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name, all oppression, oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we. Let all us praise his holy name. Fall on your knees. Slavery ended because of a song. A song that we never got translated. A war that we needlessly had to fight. God is working on our behalf. Even with us out knowing that. So here we are. We have a choice to believe in the angels. Not believe in the angels. We have a choice to wait for something else. Or stop waiting. For what God has given us. A savior is born. So, some of us have spent time shopping. Others will spend time wrapping and getting ready for this great festivity. Let me give you a, another way to look at this week, how to spend it in this precious time that we have together. We need to go shopping again because some of us are completely out of self-respect. We said things which we could take back. We're not feeling good about them. We may want to exchange a, a carton of self-righteousness for an equal amount of humility. I hear it's less expensive and it wears well. Well, I'm at that, we're going to check some tolerance to see if there's any available in my size. I need to remember to match my patience with the little that I have left. My neighbor's loaded with it, looks awfully good on him. But I was sold in the same department. There's a repair shop for integrity. Mine has certainly become frayed around the edges with too much compromising. And if I don't get it refurbished soon, there won't be any left. And I almost forgot the most important thing of all, compassion and love. If I see some, no matter what size, color, or shape is left, I'm going to stock up on it, regardless of the price. I've run out of it so many times, and I always feel disappointed when it happens. Don't know why it's taken so long to get around to shopping for these items. They don't cost nearly as much as the frivolous things that I bought for Christmas. And they stay true. Yeah, I'm going shopping today, but I can leave my checkbook and credit cards at home for the things that I have just mentioned have no price tag. Joy, unspeakable joy. Let us be overwhelmed with God's goodness as we gather this blessed Christmas week. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank you for that great message, Pastor Ken. We're also, as you all know, very blessed to have Pastor Ken bringing us the word and the message every week. And really quickly, I want to add Larry Waters. I thanked everybody for the gift of music. And Larry's up in the choir loft, and he's brought us beautiful organ music for years. So let's just give a little hand to Larry Waters and thank him. I felt terrible that I forgot him. All righty, let's... Uh, kind of slow things down and please join me in our prayers. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people. Cultivate understanding among us and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs to you. Bless and protect the seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend to them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. We pray for the leaders of all nations that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry out to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence especially Sharon, the Soule family, Barbara A., Ivan, Megan, Evie, Dave I., Alan, David D., Shannon and Lisa, Dan R., Shane, Lauren P., Kristen, Teddy, Diana M., Craig, Vince K, John Q, Sabrina, Michael, Kathy, Adam, Garrett B, John George, Paul H, Robbie, Pam H, Michael T, Ruben K, George H, and Donna K, and all who we name in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For the fellowship gathered in this place, for the spiritual gifts of all of our members, for those celebrating significant events in their lives, especially Georgina Kester, and happy birthday to Donna Reeb today, that the Holy Spirit guide us in our work and in our journeys. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, always. And please stay seated and pass along your, your waves of peace and virtual hugs. <laughs> Thank you.
we receive our offerings uh, through the mail. Thank you for your generous giving from our online friends and uh, Simply Giving and our, our app, uh, Give Plus, as well. So we've uh, gone through this entire year and uh, we're, um, God has blessed us. We're in um, very good shape. It's going through this year, we only have uh, one Sunday left after this Sunday and we'll be into 2021, finally, as we can get there. And so, uh, and so you've been very st good stewards, um, not only of uh, our property and our, um, our finances, but of one another. We have not lost one sheep. On our uh, on our uh, web uh, Zoom meetings um, every every Tuesday through Friday, we pray every week and we pray for everyone. And uh, we have we really have a hundred percent success rate as far as our prayer goes. I'll just say ninety nine because I don't want to jinx it. But uh, everyone we've been praying for has been healed, or every situation has been uh, solved, or rectified. God's been good for us, even though it's Zoom. God still listens to us for some crazy reason. So it's good. God's you know, God's in our working with us, so we haven't uh, we haven't lost we haven't lost a step here. We've been uh, keeping it together. We've been moving forward. We haven't taken a step back, and so we don't retreat in fear. Um, tough, tough a couple weeks coming up, maybe um, with um, uh, COVID and everything shaking out, and the vaccines are coming and all that kind of stuff. But I believe uh, January will be a, a important change for us, um, both here and. Uh, Nationwide, so I think good things are coming. I think we've made it over the the worst of it, and uh, good things are coming. I can't wait to see what twenty twenty one will bring. Just be a little patient, because uh, things will change, and we will change along with them as to what we're doing. So I uh, thank you for uh, Barbie, and I thank you for all your uh, generosity, your um, your love and care for us and for one another, and uh, keeping this place uh, uh, a special place uh, where God is worshipped and glorified. So, uh, generous God, you've created all that is. You provide for us every season. Bless all that we have to offer. Through the gifts we give to the world, we receive your blessings. In the name of Jesus, our Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts for the Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of a Redeemer through whom you will make all things new in a day when he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. So the choirs of angels, the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name, showing their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, Lord God of power and might. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Amen. So in the night in which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, O God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. Leaving the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. And now we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petition of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> So now gathered with Christians all over the world and by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You may partake. blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you've done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us. Open our hearts to the world's needs for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We have a few announcements. week ahead folks so you got to mark things on your calendar at least I have to do it that way okay first of all um, we will be holding a four o'clock uh, contemporary worship service right here on Christmas Eve the family worship service with John Brown and band and then the traditional service will be at six o'clock with harp music that should be beautiful also and then Christmas Day Pastor Ken will be here at 9 a.m. for a service uh, another really exciting thing, but I have an update, is I'm sure you've all heard about the Christmas star that's coming on Monday for the first time in 800 years, which is the joining of two um, uh, planets, Jupiter and Saturn. So uh, Alan Barstow has agreed to show us this with his giant telescope, which was going to be here, but he just passed out a little flyer. It's actually going to be at his house at 813 El Redondo Avenue in Redondo. I will definitely be there. So just make sure you don't come here at 5.30. Come go to Alan's house and his phone number's there too if you need to call him. Uh, Pastor Ken has been doing these comfort and joy Advent messages on Wednesdays online, uh, kind of a fireside chat that's just really beautiful and relaxing and again, just fills you with the Holy Spirit. So there will be one more of those this Wednesday, December 23rd. So please look for that. I hate to have my back to everybody. Um, the other cool thing is, uh, exciting thing is we're gonna be caroling today. So if you would like to go out with the church and carol in small groups, masked and socially distanced, uh, meet here. Are, are they still meeting here or at Vaughn's? Uh, John? Dan is gonna take a first group, right? Yeah, yeah, we're going we're going right after church, but I know that yeah. John Brown. Yeah, twelve thirty here. Okay, yeah, meet twelve thirty here to go caroling. Uh, it's mainly at a lot of our members' houses that can't get out of their house, and we're delivering cookies and goodies to them too. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for reaching out and loving our neighbors, the Riviera Village uh, businesses. This is the box that will be in the kitchen until January 15th. So if you're supporting our businesses, you can put your receipt with your name and phone number in there. And on the 15th, we'll be drawing the winning receipt. And it's basically a gift basket with gift cards from a lot of the businesses. And I'm getting calls every week from people saying, we want to put a gift card in there. We're so grateful that your church is doing this in your school and preschool. So thank you, thank you, thank you for loving the village businesses. Okay, turn the page here. Um, we, we, I know we keep mentioning, but it is a new thing. We have a new website, resurrectionlutheranchurch.org. I know it's a lot to type, but uh, when you get in there, you'll see how cool it is. So you may want to check that out sometime. And then one other important thing, as Pastor Ken mentioned, he's had these daily prayer calls Tuesdays through Fridays, but we will not be doing those on the 24th, 25th, 31st, and the 1st. So thank you very much, and hope to see some of you caroling. Okay, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We join together in reciting our memory verse. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Merry Christmas, everybody.